welcome to Skill Sprint with me, Chris Webber. This video is a quick highlight reel of my latest episode of the Commercial Edge podcast. I use my notes and scribbles from the full-length conversation to pull out what I feel are the headlines and lessons from my most recent expert guest. Drawing on my experience, this video gives you all the key points without the stories. My hope is that you can use these tips and tricks to unleash the power of your people. This series of the podcast, we continue to talk about uh, confidence building, coaching and mentoring internally, uh, especially post-training. The question I was asked is, hey, Chris, how do we how do we build coaching and mentoring internally so that we can implement what we've learned on a training course? Well, I've just had a conversation with Phil Allen and had a great conversation with Phil, really bouncing ideas off each other, really, really great energy conversation. And the essence of what Phil does is practice. Practice providing people with a space, a safe space where they can practice a conversation that they're going to have internally. So they take their learning from whatever that is, and then they get a safe space where they can practice this conversation and get feedback on how it went. Maybe try something, try something different, you know, a, a slightly different approach. And and I, it's an something that I just feel is so, so important. My history is sport, and I've always been involved in sport, always been passionate about sport. And the difference in culture between people in sport who are prepared to practice until they are perfect it, and businesses where people just say, oh, I've been on a training course, so it's fine, is just phenomenal. And I would love to create a culture across all clients that I work with and, and across everybody where they just embrace the the possibility of, of practice and really embedding it. So what was Phil's tips? What were Phil's takeaways from this? Well, I think the first thing that, that I wrote down as being an important take out of this episode was resources. He said, after training courses, we, we fail really to give people the resources that they need. He said, what about a checklist? So that you know, you've got the key points when you're preparing for an act event or preparing for an activity, you can just refer to a checklist. You can go through it, see what you need to do. You can focus on what what's important. Remind yourself of what's important. Takes us on to the second point, reminders, you know, leave pieces or, or summaries of key models that you can use to just refresh the things that you've learned from this training course. And then the final thing was practice. And what Phil and I talked about was that practice leads to confidence. And confidence is what you need when you're trying to execute brilliantly, when you're trying to do something in the heat of the moment. Um, but the gap in between there is filled with feedback. And this is a word that I feel really strongly about. Feedback and failure. I hate the word failure. I hate the organizations talk about failing and failing fast. Nowhere in the world do we talk about failure except in business. And it, I think it's just to sell books and to sell headlines. Because imagine the scenario, you, you have your child, they're learning to walk. And we say that if we didn't learn to fail, we'd never learn to walk. Imagine your child standing taking their first tentative step and they fall over. And your response to that is, you failed. Goodness me, you would never say that. You would celebrate the fact that they tried. You would celebrate the effort that they put in there to encourage them to do it again, to encourage them to do more. So take out failure from your vocabulary, in my opinion. And this idea of feedback, Phil and I discussed, it creates fear, cortisol rush. Why? Because it's negative. It's seen as a poor thing. What you want is constructive. And what Phil does with his team is they teach how to give feedback, that it's specific, that it's based upon what is actually said and what is actually done. And therefore, it is a learning opportunity. It is an opportunity to see what happened, what I said, what I did, how did that make someone else feel? 
and therefore what could I improve? And he said that this practice needs to be clear, have a goal. You need to be in a place that is safe where you're not worried about the impact on your career of all of these kind of negative or these mistakes that you might make. And it needs to be repetitive. If you can create that environment, then you're setting yourself up to, for success. And I, and I kind of agree with Phil. He's created a business that provides this space for people, that creates actors who are really talented at being able to take on the personality of people in your organization and then provide safe spaces and direct feedback. I would highly encourage you, look at this model, take it on, because if you really want to embed training, you need to provide space for people to practice. Well, what could you do differently as a result of what you've just heard? Find me on LinkedIn and let me know. For more like this, and to join in the conversation, search the Commercial Edge podcast wherever you listen to your content. Want to unleash the power of your people? Subscribe to the newsletter, link below. See you soon.